this particular clearing is on sugar addiction. The sugar, okay? So, sugar is a big one actually. I think any, most people have had some experience with sugar, meaning sugar, sugar is like in chocolate. It's in, it's in um, cakes, it's in sweets. I mean, everywhere you go, the bakeries, have you know, the, the, all the bakeries, when you smell the smell of all the good goods baking, oh, I know, going to the airport and, going, and smelling the Cinnabon place, smells so good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really good. And, I mean, it touches all our senses, you know, the smell of that kind of you know, cinnamon, cinnamon bun things and the sticky buns and all the different candies and sugars. I remember as a kid, we'd go to the store and have a nickel or something. Of course, it's dating, but <laughs> way back. But, you know, you could get candy and it was a big deal. And yet there's still, like our whole society, I would say probably Mm -hmm. About 89% of the population has some kind of a sugar addiction. Wow. That's a lot. Okay, they don't know it. How, okay, here's the thing. People don't realize that there's sugar in all, almost all your packaged foods, your canned goods, your fast food places. Mm -hmm. So you might be thinking, well, I don't have a sugar problem. I'm not eating sugar because you're not eating candy bars or you're not eating... You know, you're not going out and buying cakes or things that we would say, oh, there's a lot of sh there's sugar in that. But if you're eating at fast food places, even restaurants that are good restaurants put sugar in different things mm -hmm. and different labeling. So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not, I don't have a sugar thing. And yet, they even put sugar in french fries. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, your body is is beginning, it begins to have like a, a craving for something, even um, like those um, chip thing, you know what I mean, like uh, things you buy out of bags that have different things that you eat them, Fritos, Fritos things like that. Mm -hmm. So all of these things have sugar, okay? Sugar gets you high, it's a temporary high, makes you feel, it also has like coffee, it also has an euphoric energy to it, or your body gets some, a little bit of euphoric sense. And also drinks, you know, all the drinks that are not natural, almost all of them have some kind of sugar, even those that say natural. Mm -hmm. If you read them, they got sugar of some sorts in them. So everywhere you're looking, there is sugar hidden sugars everywhere. So in some way, unless you're eating 100% organic and natural foods and preparing your own foods, you're getting sugars in places you have no idea, and therefore, you could actually have a sugar addiction and not even know it. Okay, how about this one? Has anybody ever had something in the house that was sweet? Whether if you like pies, or you like cookies, or you like cake, or you like candy bars, and it's in the house, your mind keeps looking, you know, like wanting it. <laughs> okay? Does that happen for people? Mm -hmm. so, so I've heard people, many, many, many people say, I can't have it in the house. If I do, I'm going to eat it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's an addiction. You're addicted to that sugar. It's like anything where your mind keeps thinking about it until it's gone, that's addiction behaviors. Those are addictions. I've actually seen people um, give their young, young children that drink, that have bottles, still drinking bottles, sodas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, okay? Mm -hmm. They're giving them soda at a really early age. Look at our, look at our country, obesity, mm -hmm. sugar, 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 okay? So, yeah, so. We have, in our country, we got like 89% people addicted to sugar. I, I track the energy, I ask the questions, I get the numbers they present, and it's always, you know, it's always been right on, which is cool. So, the sugar thing, it's an epidemic. I mean, this is way beyond any other addiction. Sugar is like one of the biggest ones because it hits everybody of all ages. Look at Valentine's Day, the chocolates, you know, all that, you know, it's all about sugar, candy, candy, sugar. 
Okay, so what's it actually doing to your body? More than that, what's really happening on an emotional level? What's happening for you physically, mentally, emotionally, and why do you want to not be uh, addicted to sugar? Okay, so this, as I track the energy, because almost everyone has some kind of enjoyment with sugar, it may be one thing to have it, you know, a couple times a year. That's different, special occasions. Birthday or Valentine's Day, you, have, you know, you get a box of chocolates, okay? But when it becomes something that it's, it's constant, which for most people it is, even in the unknown, because they're thinking they're not getting sugar, but yet it's in the food they're eating, uh, there is, there's that addiction. And what's it doing? So let me just kind of, I'm going to be tracking that for people. It has a different frequency. The sugar, uh -huh, wow. Okay, so as I'm watching the frequency of sugar going into people's body, there's a, there's like a vibration that begins to happen and it goes into the cells, it goes into the blood, it hits all the, you know, the, as things moving through you, but it has a frequency that creates more, like it has a pleasure sense to it. It has like, um, like an enjoy, like, how can I say it? It's like, this is different than coffee or caffeine. It's different. It, it's, but it has like, um, Okay, when you, when you think about drinking coffee, that's one thing, but when you think about the sugar thing, if you think about it, you'll notice that the thought of that, like if you think about a favorite dessert, if you think about a chocolate that you really like, or something in the sugar realm that you just love, notice what that feels like. It brings a feeling of joy, okay, pleasure, not like pleasure like a physical pleasure, like like someone brushing your hair or, you know, something that feels good, but it, it's an emotional, physical pleasure that happens in the body. And in part what's happening is humanity, not just in our country, but all of the peoples, there's not that much pleasure happening in one's life, okay? So the sugar thing, even when you're at your desk and you take a bite of candy bar or whatever, there's something that feels pleasurable about it, but it's only temporary. That's the thing about sugar, is it passes really quickly. You know, your whole body, all these different things happen physically in your body, and, you know, all the different organs, but it's really fast, but then it's over real fast as well. Mm -hmm. So in order to maintain and, and sustain a more of a higher pleasure experience, you got to eat more sugar. And it's a false plateau, it's a false um, frequency of, that is not like really normal, what you're, what you're really feeling. So sugar is something that masks over different feelings, different emotions, and people hide the fact that they're addicted to sugar. A lot of times people that have a sugar addiction are going around telling people, it's another secret, it's kind of like a secret. Okay, and it's not accepted like look at when we look around. Yes, all the coffee stores you go to get coffee everywhere. It's such a cool thing. No one's going. Oh man, coffee addictions. But when you go sugar, sugar, and you see somebody who's obese and they're getting sugar, judgments present. I'm guaranteed, you're judging that person. So people, this is a hidden thing. Sugar becomes, especially for people who have a big addiction and they're very aware of it, it becomes hidden. It becomes a secret. And that secret is something that can create shame and, and lots of different emotions that no one wants to share. You know, you're not going to go around telling people, well, I have an addiction to sugar, and that's, you know, I don't tell people that I eat a lot of sugar, and yet I'm really gaining weight, I'm getting heavy. Most people that are eating a lot of sugar are going to be heavier. Because sugar turns into fat easily. Okay. <coughs> so we don't go telling people. So sugar has a, a hidden quality. It's great at social occasions, you know, like I said, birthdays, anniversaries, where we're celebrating. It's normal. But it's not normal when it's an everyday thing where you're going out and buying candy bars and, you know, sugar, sugar. So the frequency 
has a different sense, to, uh, like when I'm looking at the sugar addiction frequency, for me personally, like I'm comparing it to something else, but it has more, like I see, it's more of a live energy, and it has more, like I see reds in it, I see yellows, and I see reds, and that, that hits, what, what that's doing, it's showing me that it's hitting the pleasure sensors. It's lighting up pleasure sensors. And it's lighting up that emotional pleasure as well. And, but then underneath all of that, when I start scanning to start tracking to get a sense of, you know, where is this all coming from? Why, why is there such an epi epidemic on uh, sugar addiction? <clears throat> why are people using it? Yeah, it's, okay, so what's happening is it's also filling a void. Okay, there's, a, there's like a void inside of people, and they're trying to fill the void with the sugar, and again, it's just a temporary f feeling of fulfillment, and it doesn't take long before they're needing more. It, it was with all addictions, but basically, what I'm looking at is the energy, the void. Okay, I'm looking, yes, okay, this is different than even the caffeine addiction. This is, how, this is like... It's in a different place, okay, so what happens is I'm tracking this. In the core of the bee, of your physical body, if you were to just imagine, you know, the physical body and in the very core, it's almost like, like a well of energy, like we have the well of grief, we have different, different wells of energy, but this is an energy that goes like a tube of energy in the body, and it goes all the way deep, mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. okay, so what's happening, it goes all the way down into the first chakra as well. So it's literally hitting the first chakra, meaning the first chakra is where you have your stored energies or memories or experiences of situations that were survival, life, death, survival, okay? So <clears throat> that well of energy goes through the, the different chambers, the different frequencies of your chakra centers, and it goes all the way down into that first chakra. So it goes through the, the heart center, the emotional center, the power center, the uh, life, death, survival center. And it's affecting all of these energy fields in the physical body. What it's also doing in a different way, it's also keeping you from remembering, feeling, it's, it's like a pacification also, but it, it keeps one from really even knowing their deepest places of anxieties, fears, phobias, frustrations, angers, rage, terrors, grief, sadness. This hits into all kinds of frequencies. And it also keeps one from a vo okay yes yes okay so I've never seen a child throwing a tantrum, and the mother gives them a sh something some kind of sweet, and immediately they stop. Mm -hmm. Ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's happening? This is why I'm seeing the red frequency and also the anger and the you know this is a different kind of a frequency. So people that are you know what's showing me is people that are really truly addicted to sugar. They're masking over some really intense, sharp energies, emotions. Mm -hmm. Things that hit like things like rage. Things that hit things like anger. Things that can come up in somebody that will they, you know, that can literally cause harm to others. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is hitting a different frequency than even the caffeine addiction, okay? This is a, it's like, this is cool because it's totally, totally different. Oh, uh, the Hansel and Gretel, that story. Yes. The evil inside the sugar house. Yes. Okay? <laughs> yes. Isn't that cool? Yes. So yes. sugar really is masking over the feelings of frustration. Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, what happens when, um, you know, like, somebody's being frustrated or they're getting angry or whatever, grab sugar. Mm -hmm. They're not going after coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're going after the sugar because it hits a different frequency in the physical body. Mm -hmm. It affects the body differently. Okay, so all the addictions are going to do different things. This is why we have people that, like heroin addicts and coke addicts and, you know, drug addicts, it all does something different. Mm -hmm. 
So the sugar piece, the sugar addiction is going to do something different. It's masking over, it's calming, it's temporarily um, numbing out these intense feelings that people have and it, it goes into, like I said, it hits down into those lower centers. Now let me, let me just share a little bit more about the, the first chakra area, okay? So, first chakra area holds the frequencies of all your ex incarnational experiences as well as, as, as well as things of this lifetime where you have felt threatened, your life has felt threatened, where you have felt really unsafe, where you have had horrible death life experiences and in past incarnations, where you have been in survival, whether it was through starvation or the elements, you know, that means the weather, that means storms, that means hot, cold, freezing, lots of different elementals, and hitting the, the, the survival where you feel threatened. In this lifetime, there may be, there are people who are feeling the threat of the elements, but most likely people are feeling the threat of survival having to do with finances. You know, how am I going to pay my, my way? It's like, that's huge here. So, so you'll find people, the poorest people, sugar, sugar, sugar. If you pay attention, you're going to see it. Even in other countries, you're going to see it. So it's a temporary kind of euphoria that helps them to kind of not have to face or not have to feel the intensity of what they are living in that survival mode. Okay, so we, that's in the first chakra area, the first, that's the, the baseline center for people. So that, so it's like masking over and pushing that all down and numbing it out and keeping it from coming to the surface. Okay, and then we got the second chakra area, which is the emotional area, where all, you know, emotions are stored. So the sugar also numbs out the emotions. So all of your incarnational experiences, all the, the emotional traumas that you have lived, it's also going to numb those out. Okay, it also hits, like I said, it hits into the, the energy of frustration, it hits the energy of anger, rage, things like that. It num calms it down, numbs it out. Keep in mind, just keep visualizing a mom giving a kid a piece of candy when they're throwing a major tantrum and they're screaming, put a little sugar in their mouth and they immediately stop. Like, it's, it's amazing. The kid could be full on screaming, anger, raging, sugar, some kind of sugar, a piece of candy, and all of a sudden they could calm down, calm down, calm down, and start sucking on that candy. Okay? So it's like a big time pacifier for humanity. Okay? <laughs> so, and then two, feeling disempowered. So I'm, so I'll go to the, um, the third chakra area, I'm saying this because these frequencies go through, it's like this tube of energy that hits all the chakras. This is, it's a different frequency than different, uh, you know, the energies of different addictions. So even in the power center, the solar plexus area, the feeling of disempowerment, the feeling of being overwhelmed, sugar. Okay, so it's a mega avoidance. A, a great way to avoid facing oneself and feeling into what what's really happening in one's life. Okay, so I mean, even when, when you think about chocolate, I mean, chocolate's really awesome, and and chocolate actually can be good for you when it doesn't have massive quantities of sugar. You know, if you're going to eat chocolate, eat dark chocolate, mm. um, and the uh, abuse of it, the addiction of it, where you can't let it go. You, find yourself going to the store and walking by the candy area and having to get some or, you know, it's like, it's that addiction thing. Because, and so what you're doing is, I'm going to remind you, you're masking over these intense kinds of feelings. The feelings that I've labeled. Okay? So, those kinds of feelings can, they actually begin way in the past, but if we just focus on this lifetime right now, we, we, we'll do, we're going to do that first, but when we do the clearing, we will be going into the past. But right now, in this lifetime, when you have frustration, even as a child, when you can't do something, you're learning how to do something, even as an adult, okay? How many people are learning something new, and initially it's like, I can't do it? 
Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Okay? You can feel the frustration in the body. You can feel the resistance in the body. Because what's happening is you're hitting places where you feel inept, where you feel inadequate, where you feel impotent, impotent incapable. Mm -hmm. So it's like rather than feel those feelings, we're going to move towards frustration. We're going to move towards into the feeling of anger. Okay, so when you're feeling uh, like, okay, here's a new, 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 some new tool you're learning, a new, like on a computer or whatever that is, wherever you find yourself feeling like, I can't do that, it's too overwhelming, it's too much, you're going to feel some frustration, you're going to feel slight agitation, you're going to feel some anger. What's happening is you're avoiding the feeling that I just mentioned about feeling like you're, you're not capable. It's going to make you feel like, it's going to hit those places where you feel stupid where you feel ignorant, where you feel less than, okay? So it hits different frequencies, it's a different, different energy field that we're dealing with. So in the power center, that feeling of frustration where we feel disempowered, that energy field also is lit up and the, and the sugar masks that over temporarily, okay? So if you've got, if you find that you have an addiction to sugar, I mean, we can all enjoy it, I'm not saying that, but when it's an, an abuse of sugar, an addiction to sugar, this is what's happening. Wake up. You got frustration. You got feelings of incompetence, impotence, feelings of anger. But all those, feel, all those feelings like the frustration and the anger aren't really about anybody else. Those feelings are, are on, top, <coughs> on top of these other feelings where we feel like we're not capable, where we're incapable, where we're just not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not intelligent enough, it hits those places inside. So sugar helps to mask that over. So it's a good thing, you know, to be aware of, wake up to, oh, that's the sugar addiction, that's the frequency that the sugar addiction is affecting. Okay, well, okay, well, so maybe you feel like, well, you know, I don't really ever feel frustrated. I don't ever feel angry. I never get mad. I never feel like incompetent. Well, how much sugar are you eating? Okay, <laughs> check it out. Next time you feel yourself, you know, that, that feeling of the sugar to drive, I want that sugar. Is there something going on? And what, what is going on? Just pay attention. You're going to start, you're going to be amazed at what you're going to discover in your own self when you're willing to look at the, f the feelings that are presenting rather than just grabbing the sugar and eating it. Okay? So, there's nothing that feels good about feeling like you're incompetent or that you're ignorant or that you're stupid or incapable. Okay? So as I'm looking back into people's energy fields and I'm, you know, it's like when you're younger and you're learning things there's people who have said to you, what's wrong with you? Don't you understand? Can't you get this? Or just whatever the words are that someone is conveying to you, letting you know you're not doing it good enough, you're not doing it right, you're imperfect, okay? All these feelings that everyone has had at some point, even if it was from a, like a sibling or a parent or a caregiver, or a teacher, or even classmates, somewhere we've been shown or told in, that we're not doing it right. And then especially if someone gets angry with you because you're not learning it fast enough or, or learning it, you know what I mean, like even with your mathematics or all the different things that we learned early in, in school, handwriting or somewhere we got shamed. You may or may not remember it, but somewhere you've been shamed. If you weren't shamed, you wouldn't be feeling anything was wrong with you. And you wouldn't be getting frustrated. Okay, now remember, some, this is going to be coming from past lives as well. But in this lifetime, you've been somehow shown that you weren't doing it right, doing it good enough, doing it fast enough. There's something wrong with you. So sugar helps you not have to feel that there's something wrong with you. Okay? So, it's a wonderful masking over, it makes you feel good, downside is too much sugar, causes obesity, 
diseases, illnesses, because it affects your organs, it affects your body, it affects your health. So on some level too, if we look at that component, um, you know, it's like there's no denying it. You can't be lying where you can be. And you can choose to stop lying to yourself that this is poisoning your body. Too much is poisoning your body, okay? Somewhere you know it, you just don't want to look at it. You don't want to face it because that means facing, that means that you won't be able to hide or push down these other feelings that are living inside of your physical body. Okay, the feelings that I've mentioned already. So, by being willing and saying yes to facing yourself, that means you're going to find all of these places that, where there is frustration. Okay? And it's going to affect not just what seems like to have to do with those kinds of feelings, it's going to affect your relationships. It's going to affect your connections with others. It's going to affect how you treat different people and how you react and respond to different people. Um, for example, someone who's having an issue with their partner, their, their, their spouse, there's, a, there's frustration that's happening, there's anger and rage that's happening, but it's being pushed down and avoided and not looked at. And in that, other, other reactions, other things that are safer, more acceptable, are behaviors are presenting. Okay? So that means if we, st if we took away all these crutches and you had to stand up and face your own self, all these feelings would start to emerge. And so what's happening too is we're pushing down different feelings because we don't want these feelings to come out. Okay? Occasionally something happens or something gets released in the body and all of a sudden you find yourself feeling all these emotions that you didn't know were there or you knew they were there but you're pushing them down. So, the, you know, the, using, these, using sugar to keep things down, well yeah, it's great, it'll keep you down for a while, maybe all of this lifetime. But somewhere in your life stream, in, in, in your incarnational experiences, you're going to face these pieces. If you don't, you're going to recreate really intense energies that cause you to go into rage, where you cause harm, and then you might get incarcerated or something's going to happen, where now you're facing yourself. Okay? Mm -hmm.